Hello, my name is Shiraz and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to have a look at this um, poem, War Photographer, by Carol Ann Duffy. Um, before we have a look at the poem, um, let's have a look at some pictures. So the first picture here is a photographer and why do you think he's wearing a helmet? Um, He's wearing the helmet um, to to protect his head because he is taking photos in a in a war. So he's not a normal photographer. He's a war photographer. And in this picture, you can see you know there there are some people lying on the ground. Um, maybe there are some dead bodies or people who who've been injured in the war. And the next picture here, the photographer is in, in his dark room trying to develop and print the photos. Okay, and you can see the light in the, the dark room is red light. Okay, and this picture over here is, um, is a church and there's a priest who is, uh, you know, preaching to people. Uh, he's telling them the word of God and this last picture this beautiful picture is of rural England uh, you know which uh, shows a lot of uh, you know calmness and um, you know serenity happiness you know uh, greenery um, okay let's have a look at the poem In his dark room, he's finally alone. So he he is now in his dark room. So the word dark room is, you know, has um, some kind of, you know, connotation here. Um, so it's a dark room. Um, so maybe there's something, uh, you know, um, not nice maybe about this room I don't know but finally he is alone there he has he's got some peace uh, so the word finally suggests that he's been um, maybe on a long mission or maybe uh, you know a very difficult task he, he's been away for a long time so now he's finally alone um, and the word alone here um, suggests that he wasn't alone before he was with, uh, you know, other people there. Um, the word dark room, you know, it starts with a D sound, and D is a plosive, and um, this is, you know, this gives a harsh sound. Um, and that harsh sound, uh, later on, you know, it will, it will show the harsh realities of the world so now let's see what he's he's doing in the dark room. Obviously, he's he's trying to develop and print some photos uh, with spools of suffering set out in ordered rows. So spools, suffering, and set. So there's S alliteration here, which is also called sibilance. Um, you know, that shows, uh, you know, a little bit of kind of harsh, harsh realities, uh, you know, hissing sound, uh, like uh, that of a snake, with spools of suffering. So he's got spools, you know, spools are the films. He's got so many films. Uh, that means he's taken loads of, loads of photos. Um, and those photos are, not any any ordinary photos these are you know photos of suffering you know each photo has um, its own story and all these spools all these photos are set out in ordered rows okay <clears throat> um, we have uh, assonance here you can see the vowel sound in most of these words you know spools of suffering set out in ordered rows okay 
Uh, <clears throat> so these, you know, pictures and swords, they are in ordered rows. In ordered rows, we see ordered rows in a cemetery, in a in a graveyard. So these um, spools actually kind of represents graves. You know, those dead people in the in the um, in the war. The only light is red. Now, in his dark room, the only light is red. If we go back to this picture here, this one, okay. Now, the red light, you know, it it uh, it is a symbol of of danger um, and also blood, okay. So the only light is red. In the war we see only danger, we see only blood. There is no peace, there is no happiness. Uh, you know, that is what, what the war is about. So, the meaning is that we don't get anything from the war, um, apart from uh, blood, apart from dead bodies. And softly glows. Now, there is a, there's a contrast here. You know, this red light is softly glowing in his dark room. Okay, <clears throat> so there's a contrast between the the battlefield and his dark room. Uh, over here, the light glows softly. As though this were a church. Now this dark room has become a church. So there is a metaphor now. He's using the image of church uh, for his dark room. So this red light is is like glowing in uh, in in a church. And he, a priest. So the photographer is is a priest. So he's using a metaphor. Now the job of the priest is to tell the people the word of God, which is the truth. Okay. And this is what the, vo the, the, the war photographer is doing. He is telling the, the people the truths uh, of war, you know, what actually happens in the, in the war. So this, is, this shows a uh, seriousness of his job, that his, his job, uh, you know, involves seriousness and compassion and, you know, love and dedication to to show the truth uh, and convert people, you know, that's the job of the priest, but uh, the job of the war photographer is to convert people uh, in, in, in a way that they understand the, the dangers of, uh, of war and hopefully they stop, uh, they can stop all these wars. And he, a priest, preparing to intone, intone a mass. Okay, <clears throat> so mass is um, is a religious service. So, as if he's trying to tell uh, people the the truth. Okay, same <clears throat> same like um, uh, you know, like a priest who recites uh, a religious ceremony in the church. Uh, this is what he's going to do. Belfast, Beirut, Phnom Penh. So Belfast uh, in Northern Ireland, Beirut in the Lebanon, and Phnom Penh, that's Cambodia. So in all, in all these three countries, there have been war and there have been a lot of, uh, you know, um, a lot of people who, who died in these wars. Now he's using full stops. So these are one word sentences and these words, you know, they have their own stories. It's not like one word. They have, uh, you know, a history of, uh, of these wars uh, in which a lot of people um, died. All flesh is grass. This is biblical, okay? Uh, and this means uh, that the human life is very short. A uh, human life is very 
fragile. Um, but here in this poem, it has a it has a different meaning. We know that the normal human being is very short, but when there is war, the the human life becomes even shorter. And sometimes what they do is when they kill lots of people, they they just leave them um, in the battlefield. They don't bury them. So their dead bodies, their you know their flesh eventually becomes uh, part of the ground in the form of the grass. Okay? So all flesh is grass. Okay. <clears throat> he has a job to do. This is a very simple sentence. Okay? But <clears throat> it has... Uh, you know, a very deep meaning. Everyone's everyone's got to do a job, you know, to make money. And he has a job to do as well. So he has chosen to become a war photographer, okay? But the, the other meaning is that, you know, somebody, somebody's got to do this job. Somebody's got to tell the world, uh, you know, the truth about wars. So, you know, he's, he's trying to justify his work Solutions slop in trays beneath his hands. Okay, solutions slop. We've got S alliteration here. In trays beneath his hands. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we have a couple of meanings for, uh, for this line here. So solutions slop. Uh, he is in the dark room, okay, and he is moving the solutions in the trays, uh, and <clears throat> his hands are probably shaking, okay, uh, because when he sees the photos, you know, he he uh, he remembers uh, the you know all the dead bodies that he's seen uh, he saw in the war in the battlefield. Okay, so his hands are shaking, and the other meaning is that uh, you know wars. It, it is it is very difficult to find a solution for the you know for the war. Uh, the solutions can be really sloppy. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> the other meaning could be uh, you know slop also represents carelessness. So. You know the the politicians or you know the people who decide to go on a war, they they do not care about common people at all. Okay, solutions slop in trays beneath his hands, which did not tremble then, though seem to now. Okay, so this is from solution to now. This is one sentence. Okay, but. It does not finish at the end of the, the line. It goes on to the next line. And if you remember, this is called enjambment. Okay? So he's using enjambment. Uh, sorry, she, she the, the poet is using uh, enjambment to, you know, to, to show the flow of the, uh, you know, of, of these uh, events. So those hands did not tremble then because he had a job to do. He had to take the photos. If he had, if his hands had trembled at that time, then the photos would have been blurry. They, they wouldn't have been very clear. Uh, so he, he controlled himself at that time. He was calm. Uh, and, but now, when he actually sees the photos... Now his hands start trembling. Now he, you know, he can, uh, there's, there's uh, you know, trauma. He's, uh, you know, when he sees the pictures, he, uh, he gets really scared, you know, which did not tremble then, though seem to now. So his hands are trembling now. Rural England. Now, this is again a very short sentence. 
rural England. So there's a, a you know juxtaposition here, and also a contrast. Okay, so rural England, you know, that is kind of a symbol of peaceful life. There's no violence, you know, there's, uh, there's happiness. Um, home again. So now he's back at home. Home again to ordinary pain. Okay, there's internal rhyme here, again and pain. Okay. Um, it's internal rhyme here and also uh, enjambment holy home again to ordinary pain so we've got enjambment here and then if you have a look at this one ordinary pain this is an example of oxymoron okay a, a pain cannot be ordinary okay a pain is pain you know it's painful it cannot be ordinary, uh, <clears throat> but what he's saying is he's using just juxtaposition and contrast again uh, that this pain that I have now is nothing. It's nothing when it's compared to the pain of the people who were who were dying in the war on the battlefield. Home again to ordinary pain which simple weather can dispel. Okay, simple weather. Like if it's sunshine and then the pain goes away. Okay, so this is not a pain anyway. That's that's why it's, that's why she's saying it's it's an ordinary pain. To fields. So fields in the rural England. So the word home, you know, it has a lot of a lot of you know meaning to it uh, and it's a uh, uh, you know there's a contrast between home and battlefield uh, at home you know you can find peace you can you can be happy you can rest you don't have any any worries you've got family okay and fields you know fields of rural England which don't explode beneath the feet. We don't. We don't expect them to explode, okay? But in the battlefield, there are mines, and they explode beneath the feet. When you put your foot on on a mine, it would explode beneath the feet of running children. So again, he's using. She's using um, enchantment beneath the feet of running children so you know children are innocent uh, they are not they are not soldiers okay so they are running around and they step on uh, on mines and then there is explosion okay <clears throat> in a nightmare of heat <coughs> and it's so hot and it's so hot there so over here uh, the poet is using emotive language to kind of make make us emo uh, you know to to kind of you know uh, don't know how to say uh, you know to raise emotions in us so that we can we can uh, you know think we can visualize their problems. And <clears throat> um, the poet is also, you know, showing the the you know impact of these photographs. These photographs are very very uh, powerful because when you see them, you can visualize uh, the the horrors of war. There was a very famous picture of um, of a naked child who was running uh, from the soldiers during uh, the, the Vietnam Wars. Uh, so, you know, a picture can tell you a lot of, a lot of stories. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Something is happening. So remember, 
the photographer is in his dark room and he's developing the pictures and now he can see that there's something, something is happening because he's developing pictures and the, the pictures start becoming um, clearer. And this is a very short sentence, um, but it tells that something is happening. Maybe something is happening to him as well when he sees the pictures and then he remembers, um, uh, you know, his time that he spent in the war. A stranger's features faintly, so we have acceleration, uh, sorry, affiliation, fa features faintly start to twist before his eyes. Okay, so there is a stranger, you know, that he took um, a picture of. His features faintly start. So they start uh, becoming clearer before his eyes. Now, look at the choice of the, of the words, you know, this a stranger, you know. It's like, you know, we don't know those people anyway, so why do we worry about them? Okay, and then faintly, you know, it has negative one, negative connotation. So it's, uh, you know, showing weakness. Start to twist, twist. You know, it's kind of uh, you, you twist because of pain. Now, these pictures, you know, start becoming clearer, and now he can see uh, that stranger. A half formed ghost. So he's using a metaphor here for that person, for that stranger. So he is like a, like a ghost. Maybe he's already dead or uh, he's like a, you know, like a half ghost. Um, notice the, the assonance here, you know, formed ghost. Okay. Uh, he remembers the cries of this man's wife. It's a cries wife. So once again we have assonance, you know, the, the middle vowel sound is same, cries wife. He remembers the cries of this man's wife. So now when he sees that picture, he can remember how this dying man's wife was crying. Okay, it's very, you know, emotive language here that uh, the, the, the poet is using here. And there's a bit of, uh, you know, suspense as well. How he sought a, approval without words to do what someone must. Okay, now imagine, imagine this, you know, terrible situation, you know, a man's... Uh, wife is crying because the man is dying but the photographer has to take a photo so that he can then show that photo to the world uh, how he sought sought is the past form of seek so but he needed permission from the wife to take the photo but the way he took permission was without words it was only gestures and how imagine how the wife would have nodded or maybe using her eyes she she might have approved she might have given him permission to to take the photo so you know it's, it's really it's a really horrible situation isn't it how he sought approval without words to do what someone must so someone's got to take the photo someone's got to tell um, the world, uh, the the reality, the horrors of uh, of war, and this is what the job of a photographer is. Or maybe he's just taking photos to 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 make some money. You know, we don't know. And how the blood stained into foreign dust, so blood stained. So the blood of that man, it stained into the dust, and the dust is foreign. So foreign, you know, it shows it's a foreign country. So why why do we care? 
why do we care about that country? You know, we are happy in our country, so, you know, that's it really. A hundred agonies. A hundred agonies. So it's not only one picture. There are loads of other pictures. There are so many pictures. A hundred agonies in black and white. So all those agonies, you know, all those, you know, stories of these um, agonies in the form of the picture, they are black and white. So, the, you know, black, they are black and white because they need to be in the, you know, in the newspaper, they will be in black and white. But black and white has also another meaning, which is, um, um, you know, something which is in the written form, which is real, which is, you know, there's no doubt about it. Um, so here we, we don't have any doubt about the horrors of, uh, of a war. Um, and one more meaning is, you know, black is a symbol of evil and white is a symbol of good. Um, so, to, you know, they're good and innocent people who are being um, murdered, who are being killed um, because of some evil powers who, you know, are trying to, uh, you know, capture a country or, you know, they, they have their own kind of interests and they don't care about innocent people. A hundred agonies in black and white. So there's there are loads of loads of pictures from which his editor will pick. Look at the choice of the words, you know, will pick. You know, you pick something very casually. So the editor will only pick out five or maybe six. Okay, so, you know, look look at the, the casual casualty, you know, casual vocabulary here, uh, that the, the editor is not really concerned about the horrors of, uh, of war. He, you know, he needs some pictures, and he needs those pictures for what? For Sunday's supplement. Not the main part of the newspaper, but only for the additional part of the the newspaper, you know, which has stories on maybe fashion or or maybe films or you know something which is not really very much important. And he will only pick. He will not like uh, have a look at all the pictures and then decide which one is you know best suited for his newspaper it's it's not it's, it's just casual nature and maybe five or maybe six you know it depending upon how much how much space he's got on the newspaper so people don't really care about um you know about foreign countries where uh you know, people are being killed. The readers, so that is the the situation with the editor. And now we have the reader. So when the readers read those newspapers, you know, and when they see these pictures, the reader's eyeballs prick. So prick is, you know, very, for a very short time. Uh, very short time. Uh, here we have this sentence. It's it's finishing within the line, and then we have another uh, sentence starting in that line. So this is an example of caesura. Okay. So when the sentence finishes within the line, and then we have another. Uh, another sentence starting in the same line. That is Caesura, and the reader's eyeballs prick with tears. So this one, prick with tears, it doesn't finish here, it goes to the next line. And if you remember, this is an example of 
Yep, enchantment. The reader's eyeballs prick. You know, they may, maybe they, they cry, but for a very short time, for maybe a few seconds, with tears between the bath, bath and pre-lunch beers. So these are luxuries, you know. They are having a bath and then they have pre-lunch beers as well. So they are spending a very luxurious life and they do not care about those photos, okay? Which is really sad, you know, that the poem uh, has a very pessimistic tone at the end. There's a, you know, lack of interest of, of mankind. Um, but the photographer has to do this difficult, uh, this difficult job. And, you know, notice the, you know, how difficult it was for, for the photographer to take photos. But all his work is kind of reduced to pictures in a, in a magazine, not even in the main part of the newspaper. And people will not be influenced by his work um, at all. But he's got to do the job. You know, he, he cannot give up. From the airplane, he stares impassively at where he earns his living. So, it's not only the editor and the readers, it's, it's a photographer as well. He has also uh, kind of, he, he also does not have any emotions this is why he stares impassively at where he earns his living. He's got to make some money. So maybe it's only a job for him. Or maybe it's, it's a lot more. Maybe it's more than a job. We don't really know. But he looks at those places when he's in the plane. You know, he stares at those places without emotions. Okay. Um, and they do not care. And people do not care. So it's a very, very critical tone. It's a question for all the people. It's like a challenge to the reader, to the editor, um, and for we and for, we, and for they, uh, whether, you know, we should think about, whether we think we do think or not. Actually, the truth is, and that's a bitter truth, um, that we don't really think about uh, about these people. And this is really sad. This is very, very sad. Right, okay. So, this is War Photographer. If you have any questions, please... Um, you can ask me um, in the comment box and I will try to, to respond to your questions um, as soon as I can. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye.